Making American Government in Politics Tenable, presented by CitizenU.org. Today's topic, Federalism. The division of power between national and state governments. Federalism. Federalism is all about power. Dividing sovereignty between state and and national governments. We call this federalism. Federalism is our fundamental bulwark against the natural tendency toward national tyranny. Separate government into various sovereignties, national, state, and local. Time has shown that federalism stimulates local interest in policymaking, it also fosters innovation and experimentation. Though federalism appeared to create more government, it is safe to say it created less concentration of government in one place. Federalism. Dividing sovereignty between national, state, and local governments. Federalism. Federalism. The following ten words will make federalism more understandable, more tenable. Supremacy Clause The Constitution asserts in Article 6 that U.S. law trumps all others. The supremacy of the U.S. Constitution may be the final word, but it does not suggest other levels are powerless. Rather, local authorities cannot deny certain national provisions. The Supremacy Clause. Why did the framers include a Supremacy Clause in the U.S. Constitution? Marble Cake. Understanding how federalism actually works is no easy task. Political scientists have often used metaphors. No better metaphor than cake. Federalism actually looks more like a layer cake. The duties and responsibilities of national and state governments, however, are mixed. Though separately organized today, government units tend to cooperate more than rival each other. Federalism is more like a marble cake, after all, and not a layer cake. Marble cake. Can you think of another metaphor that might better explain federalism today? Demographics. Demography is the study of populations and their vital statistics. Demographics important to political science would include gender, education, race, religion, occupation, region, and age. Data is collected on all of these subcategories in order for the government to better fulfill its duties. Demographics. Some have said zip code is destiny. Do you agree? Grassroots. Former House Speaker Tip O'Neill uttered a basic maxim of our government. All politics is local. Grassroots means more and more common folk are engaged in politics. Grassroots. Political cynics talk less about grassroots and more about astroturfing. Can you explain what this means? Devolution. Devolution is a word used in many different contexts, but it always involves returning to something. Devolution in this context means returning to classical federalism. Devolution was an idea that found particular resonance in the Republican Party during the 1990s. It continues to be a rallying cry for conservatives, even the Tea Party movement. Devolution. Explain the benefits of devolution. What would be the dangers? Ma mandates. 
The national government uses its power of the purse to apply sticks and carrots to state and local governments. Mandates are like sticks. Mandates are when the national government requires state and local governments to provide certain services often without money attached. Usually mandates are met with serious misgiving. Mandates. Why would the national government use mandates? Explain the advantages and disadvantages. Referendums. The people have demanded greater authority in their government. Referendums allow the people to vote directly for or against legislation on election day. Bypassing the filter of our elected officials, referendums give people a greater say on public policy. Referendums. How might a broader use of referendums dramatically change the way we do politics? Grants. The national government uses its power of the purse to apply sticks and carrots to state and local governments. Grants are like carrots. Grants are appropriations of money given to states by the national government for certain purposes. Categorical grants give the states the least discretion with the provided money. Block grants tend to give states greater discretion. Grants. There is an old saying, there is no such thing as a free lunch. Are federal grants a free lunch? Explain the possible pitfalls of federal grants. Electoral College Even today, we do not directly elect our president. Presidential candidates must receive a majority of votes in the Electoral College. The candidate who receives 270 electoral votes or more is the next U.S. president. Most states have a winner-take-all rule. The candidate who receives the most votes in the statewide election receives all of that state's electoral votes. Electoral College. Why still use the Electoral College? List arguments for and against. Jurisdiction. Jurisdiction speaks to the extent to which a court can act. Having jurisdiction empowers a court to decide a case. Conversely, without jurisdiction, courts are limited. There are certain cases that federal courts are restricted from viewing. Jurisdictional questions are a healthy reminder that governments, courts in this instance, cannot do anything that they want. There are limits. Jurisdiction. Why is it so important that we have a limited government, including the courts? We're here trying to make government and politics tenable, making government and politics more understandable. Today's theme, Federalism, presented by CitizenU.org.